All right, um, I think we are good to go. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining today. Uh, today is uh, the December 20th, 2023 meeting of the Kingston Police Commission. Um, we have a quorum. Thank you all for being here. Uh, we're going to go through the agenda today and then uh, we'll go from there. Uh, all right, so. Uh, public comments. Uh, we don't have anyone here from the public, uh, either in person, and I don't believe we've received any um, public comments uh, to our police commissioners at kingston-mi.gov email address. Uh, I'll have a meeting, uh, motion to accept the meeting from the last time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, communications from the chief. Do you have any communications? I got. I left them right on the top of my desk when I left. But I have two letters of thanks and appreciation, uh, specifically for the officers and helping out during some of these protests that have occurred uptown. Specifically, maybe uh, Lieutenant Negron as the event coordinator did a great job. He's doing exceptional. Dealing with the public in those volatile situations really does a good job of smoothing everything over. Work with state police and the sheriff's office, um, and then uh, all the events. Uh, it's it's uh, really. Really working the events pretty hard, and uh, the officers are doing very well in that term. I'm trying to use them as community engagement uh, things, so it's working out pretty well. Yeah, excellent. It's up and running with us. Yeah, good. Two things. Great. Well, thanks for sharing that. Commissioner, you don't have any comments to us, Commission. All right. Uh, so, report of the chief. Uh, so, so far, we're doing well. Uh, we do still have seven vacancies we're trying to fill, get the backgrounds done on the there was a statement provided to us with five people on it. Four have returned the information. Uh, three look like we're going to try to interview for January's meeting. So hope to have the backgrounds available and complete. We're almost done. Um, one of them is a local individual in the Stonebridge area. The other two are outside of county. So these are individuals that took a different test. That can we get okay? They're on the state state test. So there's there's two tests, right? We still hold the state police exam, but. The, the, results of the, the other exam that was given at the same time and only can be used once a local list has been exhausted is the state test. Uh, I think Jack said there was 1,800 people at one point that were eligible to say, yeah, we're, you know, I'm interested in being considered by Kingston. But of those, a number, I think it was nine showed up for the PT or, or scheduled to show up for the PT, only six showed up and only the four that showed up passed. One had already previously given us uh, asking school of the, the civil service. Um, we did the backgrounds on them. They look like okay candidates. I don't believe any of them currently have any police training, so we'd have to send them to the academy at some point. But uh, we'll hold off on the interviews until January's meeting. At this point, once we come off that list, which will be the January meeting, we can then effectively certify the local list for the test that was held in September. And then begin backgrounds on those individuals. Mm -hmm. and so uh, again, we have 17 candidates on that that passed. Uh, they've Jackie from uh, civil service has said you can come down and check out the scores for them. So they don't know their ranking, but they know their scores. And uh, so we do have some background packets that have been handed in, and the officer the detectives have already started those to some degree. Uh, but we're trying to move as fast as we possibly can. And all 17 of those have express their renewed interest that they're continuing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And my understanding she's already had the list of canvas. Uh, so we have currently seven vacancies as of now, with two more uh, with retirements of the Detective Bain and Detective Reyes. So those two will be leaving in January. We were able to, there was a police academy graduation where Hefner, uh, Dan Hefner and Ryan North graduated. They're going to be starting the street tomorrow. And working through field training, they'll be eligible to uh, to go out of their second phase of FTO January 18th, I believe it is. So once they hit the street, they'll, they'll still have to work with another field training officer, but at least they'll be the county for the schedule on that. So we can just 
that technically bring seven down to five? Yes. Well, for the short term, but then you have two re retirees and then go back up. Right. Seven. So we're going to, we're going to end up jumping the numbers here. Yeah. But the encouraging, so you have 20 plus. So yes. seventeen from the list plus three. To yeah. Eight. And then, then also I can't pass PT. Right. So at this point, you know, they're all going to be considered just backgrounds we have to go through now. So I don't know at this point if anyone, I, I know of two people that are currently served by police officers and they're local. So we'll see how many other ones show. If not, then we'll make plans to set up in the academy, whether it's hours or Dutchess run the county, whatever. The, the academy training has to be complete by one year, within one year of being hired. So there's no other laterals that have expressed No one else has submitted any applications. Um, the idea, I don't know if I'm mixing where this all goes, man, I'm sorry, but is that with the two that are coming in to us from the county graduation, and the two detectives that will be retiring is we're going to be saying two of the candidates that interviewed here for detective, we're going to move them over into a special assignment. Um, give them a chance. Give them a chance. Sorry. They, we've talked to a bunch of them and said, listen, you know, we're not sure you want to do it. We're not, you know, you're not sure you want to do it. Let's, let's work through this. So I believe it's going to be a three month essay, we'll start the list and work our way down. And it gives them an, an opportunity to kind of work through those concerns that they may have. So. One will be on the day shift, one will be on the day 12. So then we'll still have four detectives available on days and two detectives on the shift. At some point, once we start to, to re rearrange me, um, the union has agreed to reduce the, uh, see, it's not the minimum man. We're still going to maintain that, but the contractual uh, percentages that are agreed to in the contract requires to have a certain number of officers assigned on every shift to meet the number of minimum manning officers were required that we decided to have. So on day shift right now, there's five officers, six on 412s and five on minimums. In order to meet that standard, we have to have 12 assigned on days, 15 assigned on 412s, and 12 assigned on minimums. The unions have agreed to drop that number down by one, not file any grievances, work with the city on this, and at least for the, the 2024 calendar year, so that gives us a lot more flexibility in assigning people to detective assignments and so on. So they're fully aware of everything we're trying to do um, replacing these bodies. Yeah. Vacancies. And that was a part of what we had discussed. I think it was at the last meeting that we had about what we had proposed to the Common Council in terms of recruitment and retention. And so we um, were able to get approved, um, you know, a kind of two fold uh, retention and recruitment plan. So uh, for officers who are here for five years or longer, um, they're going to see a $5,000 bump to their salary in 24, and then another 5000 in 2025 um, to be able to help retain officers and recruit them. Because we have a good starting salary for recruits, but once you get to five years, as you all have heard, we're losing people to further south or to the state police um, because they're... They, uh, the way that folks um, now with the new pension system in New York State, um, over time uh, is capped at how much you can account toward your pension. And so they really are leaving for higher base pay locations, even though we offer a lot of overtime and that, you know, they make a lot of overtime, it doesn't count toward their future retirement. And so uh, they now can, you know, with this plan have a little bit higher base pay once they get to five years. And so that's one part of it. The second part of it was that for our officers who um, are Spanish speaking or who want to learn to speak Spanish, um, we now have kind of a twofold program where if you uh, can speak Spanish and are willing to go get tested the same way we do with our Spanish speaking officers, they have to go take a test. Um, they're able to then get one and a half percent increase on their base pay. If they can write Spanish as well um, and are certified for that, they can get another one and a half percent. So they can get basically a 3%, you know, uh, increase or addition on their base pay, um, you know, similar to what we would do with our education program because we give people additional funds for having a bachelor's or a master's degree. Uh, this would, um, and so not only is this good to be able to help retain and recruit Spanish speaking officers, uh, it's a way for us to be able to um, encourage those that are with us to actually get trained um, mm -hmm. and to take classes. And then now they're going to be able to be compensated for that. And so that was really well received by the union. Um, they approved it. 
uh, last month, and they um, and then as a part of it, they've agreed to you know allow us some flexibility in the Manning next year as we're kind of going through you know this kind of rehiring process with civil service, which creates relief on the mandatory overtime as well. Right. Yeah. It's from the building of some time off. One of the things that we're, we're doing now, uh, again, January, when the shifts start to change and the ground power gets picked by seniority, is that a daytime dispatcher, our full time dispatcher, is going to be working the Monday through Friday schedule as soon as we attack, uh, which will make scheduling easier for the part time dispatchers. Right now, their regular days off for a full time dispatcher is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or in the following week, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It is difficult, if not impossible, sometimes to find people to work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in the middle of the week. Yeah. You know, this way they can still have full time jobs and work on the weekends to cover dispatch. So we're hoping that the other dispatchers will see the benefit to them and sign on board as well. It's a trial period of 90, 90 days. Yeah. days on. Um, but it should help. We've been bouncing this idea around for a long time. And uh, I think at this point, they're, they're going to give a shot and see what happens. So. Uh, so I think that that was the report of the chief. That was, I think, also just some new business updates <laughs> that we did um, there. Uh, and I don't have any unfinished business. Um, we do have uh, for executive session today. Um, since last time we met, there was two use of force incidents that we're going to review, and then there was a um, one complaint that came to us, and then one was just a notification from another agency. Um, for us to be aware of. And so at this point, does anyone have anything else uh, to talk about before we go into executive session to discuss those items? All right, if not, I'll ask for a motion to enter into executive session. I right, thank you, Mr. Mace. Do I have a second? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. All right, um, so we're back out of executive session. So can I have a motion to uh, come out of executive session? Uh, thank you, Commissioner Mapes, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Bowden. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay, um, so coming out of executive session, um, we reviewed um, two uses of force and we didn't um, have anything coming out related to those in particular. Um, but for uh, we did have one complaint that we reviewed today, um, and so I think we have a motion for that. Uh, so does someone want to make that motion? Make a motion that the, uh, the officer's actions be exonerated. Okay, do I have a second on that? Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Okay. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, and so with that, that's all of our business for today. Um, does anyone have anything else? Not. Uh, I have a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Commissioner Mapes. So, <laughs> second. second. All right. Thank you, Jordan. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you all so much for coming, and uh, I hope everybody has a nice holiday. Yes. Merry Christmas to everybody.